Hello everyone. Um, sorry it's been a while since I've had a tutorial. The holidays and everything you know. Uh, let's go ahead and create a very basic model here. Create a ball. And I'll stretch them out. Okay, hit tab to smooth them out. I'm going to go like this. Okay, turn the symmetry mode off until we need it. Center him so that the symmetry will work correctly. Now turn on symmetry. Select a polygon, shift F, and right drag to inset the polygons. Uh, select these, H to stretch. We got little eyes going on here. Select these, shift F, right drag, make a little mouth. Okay. So now we have our little guy, and we're going to save him. I already had a morph guy there. Okay, so now we'll create some morph targets. Um, what we need to do to create morph targets is uh, first click on this little M button and you'll see it turns to base. We always have our base as our actual model. Now if we go to new we can add a morph target. Uh, I'm going to make his eyes blink so we'll call this EXP for expression blink. You can write anything you want but the reason why I'm putting this EXP dot is later on when we put these morphs in the morph mixer they will be organized by um, anything you have in front with a dot um, it will automatically create subfolders for all of these uh, morph targets, which is very helpful for um, organization if you have a lot of morph targets. Uh, I'll show you what that does in a second. Click on, make sure relative is selected. Do not ever choose absolute. Uh, click create. Okay. All right. Now we're in here. So now, as you can see here, it says expression not blank. So any change we make to this mesh will only be done to this morph target. It will not change the actual model itself. <clears throat> so we have a little blink expression. Here's what he looks like normally. Here's what he looks like when he's blinking. Okay, <clears throat> so do not make any changes to the actual geometry when you're inside of a morph. Um, for example, do not select these polygons and delete them or something because that will screw up everything. If you need to make changes to the actual mesh structure, go to the base and then make the changes there. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's make one more. And we'll call this um, <coughs> mouth dot. Make it, make him do an O expression here. Okay. Just drag out some things here. Uh, turn off symmetry for right now. I don't really need it. So as you can see, he's doing sort of like a surprise look. <coughs> Oh, <coughs> excuse me, folks. <coughs> okay, so now we have two different expressions and the base. Okay, so we'll save this model and we'll send him to the layout. And there he is in the layout. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna F5. Be the reason why he looks all chunky like this is because the default material does not have the smoothing set. So hit F5 to bring up your material editor and set smoothing on. And now he looks a lot better. Okay. So uh, to animate the morph targets is very easy. Just hit um, the P key for properties. Go to the deform tab. Go to dip displacement and choose morph mixer. And as you can see, it already knows how many endo they're called endomorphs in Light Wave. Uh, how many morphs we have in here. So if you double click on this, if you had ten morphs, it would say ten endomorphs. Um, double click on the morph mixer and you bring up this window which has the morphs for our character and as you can see because we labeled the morphs as exp dot something and mouth dot something it already created these subfolders with our stuff in here so this is really useful later on if you need to animate uh, if you have like 10 20 morphs or something like that it can be very useful so what we'll do is there's not a lot of screen real estate here but when you click on it <clears throat> as you can see you get a slider area and uh, it has a envelope. If you click on E, you can animate things using the, the graph editor here, or you can use these sliders. And what you can do is, if you want to animate him blinking, <clears throat> as you can see, it's interactive, and you just animate him blinking. And the best thing is, you get two morphs for the price of one here, because you can not only animate, if you go to 100%, you will get the effect of exactly what that morph target looks like. Anything up to there is sort of like a percentage of that. But if you go in the negative version, 
as you can see, <clears throat> because we animated, we morphed his eyes closing, if you go negative, it goes in the exact opposite direction, so you can get the surprise look with his eyes wide open. And so you can really get two morphs of the price of one. <clears throat> and in order to animate this, all you really have to do is go through and drag the slider, go to a new time, time frame, and drag it back. And when you scrub, you'll see the slider moving. Same thing with the mouth. You can go ahead, um, if you press the K key, you'll create a keyframe there. Let's, let's do the mouth using the, um, the graph editor. <clears throat> we can go in here and drag to a certain time, click on the add keyframe, and move it up to 100% uh, here. That's 101, but we'll just select 100% and then we'll move over here and we'll select keyframe and make this 0% alright so now as you can see he's animating his his mouth and his face are moving at the same time <clears throat> you may notice um, some kind of tearing in the mesh if that happens go to the geometry tab and set the subdivision order to last and look at that it looks much better okay so if you see that tearing uh, go ahead and do that um, Morphing in Lightwave is, I think, one of its best features because in other programs, you have to make a separate copy. If, you, For example, we wanted to have this guy morphing, we would have to co duplicate his head over and over again and modify each version of that head and then save those as morph targets and hide them or delete them or something. And, and then if you need to edit them, you have to go and unhide them and find them again, and it's just chaotic. This is much, much nicer, and uh, I think it works pretty well. Um, and there's various other tricks that you can do with it uh, later on. I'll show you some other things. If you go into the uh, morph mapping, if you go to the map, you can do things like, let's see, is it detail? It should be on the map. Morph. <clears throat> there's a, a lot of things you can do here. You can go ahead and um, copy morphs uh, back and forth, and um, <clears throat> you can uh, apply uh, one morph to another. So you could select a morph. For example, if I want to make a new morph, call morph, and then let's see, I go in my morph and I just go to more apply morph. I can select. Um, let's see, I wanted the new morph to have 50% of the blink morph with it. All right, so it's pretty easy to go ahead and, and make modifications to these these morphs. Plus, you can go back into these morph targets, and if you want to change things to the morph target, sync layout, go back, and then those, <clears throat> as you can see there, <clears throat> because we pinched his face together, we all the uh, changes we made to the morph target are reflected here. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, we'll have more tutorials later.